I don't always joke around on April Fools. Just kidding. I do. Hattie, I'm sure that most of you have seen rabbits in the woods before, and that ain't anything unusual. But I'm going to tell you a story about a rabbit that I've seen in the woods that is extremely unusual indeed. This rabbit, I was sitting there real quiet like, and I see it come along, and it's not bopping along and hopping like most rabbits do. This rabbit was was kind of sleuthing along real stealthy like, like a cat. And it sneaks up behind this Poor little innocent field mouse, and the, and the rabbit's got a carrot in his right hand, and as it sneaks up right behind him, it takes the carrot, and it comes up, and it goes whack right on top of that poor little field mouse's head. Oh, what a sight that was. And, and no sooner does that happen, I hear this fluttering sound, and I, I, I look up, and it's a, it's a good fairy. And it was a fairy. I know it was, I saw it with my own two eyes, and I wouldn't lie to you or anybody else. And it was a good fairy, and you'll know by the end of this story. And this fairy says to that rabbit, Foo Foo? The rabbit's name was Foo Foo, because that's what the fairy called him. Foo Foo, I told you before not to hit those field mice on the head with that carry, because it's not a good thing to do, and I'm just tired of telling you, and that's it. I'm all done. Next time you ever try to do that, I'm going to turn you into a goon. Well, the rabbit runs off kind of snickering like he just got away with murder. Not too long after that, I see this thing moving along. It's the same rabbit again, and he's coming along with his carrot in his hand, moving real stealthy-like, and he slides up behind another little field mouse, and he raised that carrot like it, and then... The good fairy come along, and just like that, she waved her wand and turned that thing into a goon. And there's a, there's a, a moral lesson to be learned by this. It's a universal, lifelong lesson. And that is, here today, goon tomorrow. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish with no eyes. So... What do you call a body with no nose? Nobody knows. Hey, what is spring's favorite pickle? Hmm? Daffodils. Okay, okay. Go. so a termite walks into a bar. Good so far. And asks, yeah. is the bar tender here? Help. So why was the snowman searching through a bag of carrots? Because he was picking his nose. Remember everyone, it's still COVID. Keep washing your hands, wear your gloves when you need to. I bought a pair of gloves yesterday and they were all lefts actually, which, you know, on one hand is great, but it's just not right. <clears throat> Hi, Lost Nation Theater. It's Maggie Lenz. How's everyone's pandemic going? My pandemic project was owing to be cleaning out my closet. And some other people's pandemic project was going to be creating and distributing a vaccine to combat the global pandemic. One of those pandemic projects hasn't started yet. Doesn't matter which one. They both presented their challenges. Anyways, brighter days ahead. I love you, Lost Nation Theater, and I miss you, and I can't wait to see you back in action. Happy 2021 and beyond. So I have this friend who's a mathematician, and 
she always very positive. In fact, when it comes to negative numbers, she will stop at nothing to avoid them. You know, I, uh, I threw a boomerang a couple years ago, and now I live in constant fear. A masked robber burst into a Texas bank and forced the tellers to load a sack full of cash. On his way out the door, a brave Texas customer grabbed the mask and pulled it off, revealing the robber's face. The robber shot the customer without a moment's hesitation. He then looked around the bank and noticed one of the tellers looking straight at him. The robber instantly shot him also. Everyone else, by now very scared, looked intently down at the floor in silence. The robber yelled, Well, did anyone else see my face? There were a few moments of utter silence in which everyone was plainly afraid to speak. Then one old man tentatively raised his hand and said, My wife got a good look at you. Hi, my name's Sayla and I've got a joke for you. What's worse than raining cats and dogs? Hailing taxis! <laughs> Do you want to hear a joke about a piece of paper? Never mind. It's terrible. monster plays the most pranks on April Fool's Day? Frankenstein. A and B were going to prank their friend, but they just let her be. As many of you know, there are many stories about disasters that happen during a performance. Well, the one I'm going to tell you about actually was during an opera conducted by a very famous British conductor, Sir Thomas Beecham who was very much of a wag as well as a fabulous conductor. Well, at Covent Garden in London, he was conducting a performance of the opera Aida by Verdi. And as you know, Aida, particularly in the second act, is a huge spectacle. I mean, there are a hundred people on stage and dancers and singers and supernumeraries and the management of the opera house, for some unknown reason, decided that they needed animals in this big finale of the second act. So they brought in animals. Didn't really tell anybody that they were going to do that. Uh, so uh, they told like, they let everybody know the day right before, like, you know, when they were calling places at the curtain time. Oh, by the way, the triumphal scene is going to have a few animals in it. Don't want to bother you. Well, Sir Thomas was not pleased, but he went down because being the trooper he is, he goes, well, we'll just, you know, go through it and it's going to be wonderful. Well, it wasn't wonderful because everybody was so freaked out by that announcement that they kept missing their cues in the first act or singing the wrong things or whatever. And Sir Thomas was just at the end of his rope. Well, he took a deep breath, launched into the second act and then the finale comes and all these people are on stage and then the animals start coming in. And there were tigers in cages and there were monkeys flying around and there were horses. And last but not least, there was a huge elephant who gets to center stage on his procession across and defecates right there. Well, the audience doesn't know quite what to do. First, you hear this huge gasp from the audience. And then you, they start breaking up. They start laughing and going crazy. And the people on the stage start sort of laughing, but then, you know, are trying to actually creep off into the stage wings. So they're not around for this because nobody knows what's going to happen. So Sir Thomas stops everything. He stops the singing. He stops the orchestra. He turns around to the audience, stamps his foot once and says, a grave social error, ladies and gentlemen, but egad, what a critic. <laughs>
What country has the fastest growing population? Ireland. It's always Dublin. I'm reading a great book about anti-gravity. I can't put it down. The past, the present, and the future walk into a bar. It was a little tense. What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. What do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Still no idea. <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey, Anna. How do you know the difference between a good joke and a... No, no, wait. Hey, Sean. Yes, Anna. What's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? I don't know. Timing! <laughs> One more time. Hit me What's again. so funny Hit is me that you do it so different from how I do it. Well, you have to do it after. Do it, but hold on, okay, one, one okay. more time. One more time. Hey, what's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? Timing. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> no, but they were all left. So today a barista asked me how I took my coffee, and I told them very, very seriously. What did the daddy buffalo say to the baby buffalo when he left for work? Bye, son. <laughs> Hello. So what do you call a empty container of cheese whiz? Cheese was. So it's been a rough day. I accidentally swallowed a book of synonyms. I got the sorest throat I ever had. I have a few jokes about unemployed people, but none of them work. So why do eggs hate jokes? Because they always crack them up. <laughs> Did you hear about the cheese factory in France that exploded? There was nothing left but debris. <laughs> Would you like to hear a little story from the 20th century? Courtesy of my grandfather. Thank you, grandfather. Mr. Jones goes into his favorite restaurant for his Friday evening little treat of a meal. Back in those days, people didn't just go out every day for a meal. Friday evening meal was a treat. So he goes to his favorite restaurant, his favorite table, and, and his server comes over and it's a new waitress. Um, but he greets her, says hello, and says, I'd, I'd like to have my usual. I, I usually have a hamburger and a salad and a side of kiddly beals. So she dutifully takes down the order and goes back to the kitchen and places it with the chef. And he's fine with it until she gets to the kiddly beals and no, nope, sorry, we, we can't do that. Um, don't have that. So she goes back out to Mr. Jones and says, well, most of the order went in, but I'm sorry, we don't have any kiddly beals. And Mr. Jones is very concerned. He's like, well, I order it every week. I, yes, you certainly do. Please go back and tell the chef I'd like to have my usual with the kidley beels on the side. So she goes back and dutifully takes it up with the chef who then says, well, um, we'd really like to please, but I'm sorry, we simply don't have any kidley beels. So she slowly creeps back into the dining room and approaches him again and is very apologetic, but sorry, we have no kidley beels. Would you like something else? And He's like, no, no, nonsense, my dear. I'm sure you have kidley beals. I have them every week. Here, come over. Let me show you on the menu. So she bends over and he points and says, you see, there they are, kidley beals. And she looks at the menu item and says, oh, oh, she's so relieved. You mean kidney beans. And Mr. Jones says, well, that's what I said, diddle I? <laughs> What do you get when two plants kiss? Tulips. So, a veterinarian and a religious healer and a hairstylist were all traveling in a car together when they hit 
a rabbit on the road. They got out and of course the veterinarian starts to try to take care of the rabbit and it is really apparent that this rabbit is just gone. And so the veterinarian says, sorry, there's just nothing we can do. Religious healer says, of course, there's something we can do. Let me intervene. Tries lots of prayers and incantations and interventions and nothing changes for this poor rabbit. And so they're about to leave when the hairstylist suddenly says, wait, I think I have something. Goes to the back of the car, gets out a spray can, sprays it on the bottle, uh, on the on the rabbit. The rabbit jumps up, hops a couple of hops away, turns around and waves. Hops a few more jumps, turns around and waves. Hops a few more jumps, turns around and waves all the way to the forest and then out of view. And so the veterinarian and the religious healer are stunned and they say, oh my gosh, what is in that bottle? And so the hairstylist hands over the bottle and it says, restores life to dead hair and gives it a permanent wave. A woman goes to a bar and she says to the bartender, I'd like an entendre, make it a double. So he gave it to her right there on the bar. It's been a tough year for us all. The pandemic and quarantine have caused us to do some pretty crazy things. Like dye our hair. What do you guys think? It's a choice. April Fools. <laughs> Thankful for filters on Instagram keeping me sane. Gotcha. I'm Laura Michelle Earl. You may know me from Sense and Sensibility, Twelfth Night, and Turn of the Screw. Sending all my love to the Lost Nation Theater community. Miss you guys.